is our, uh, our test rig that we'll be using to test all our motors, ESCs uh, for our powertrain. So having a test rig like this will allow us to yeah, really dial in some of that data and allow us to get a lot more accurate uh, predictions on how our vehicle will perform. Yeah, so this is just like uh, the motor mount bracket. So we'll attach the motor to this and then it will rotate and give us the torque readings from the two load cells here. The purpose of this test bench is to really gather a full data suite from all of the different uh, sensors, verify all of the voltages, current, uh, thrust, as well as torque. Uh, the next step after first spin is more power, basically. <laughs> we just crank it up and see what it will give us. And we're going to do some incremental increases in power and make sure that we're approaching the limits in a sort of methodical way. Well, yeah, kind of excited, but we've never tried the, like, the full system. Yeah, so we tested each set system individually, but we've never tried it as a whole system. So I am a bit worried if something can go wrong because of my code and my GUI. Hopefully it's not, it won't be the case. DC power supply is turning on. So the test point number four, which is 50%. Today we spun the test bench up for the first time, which was a really good sign. So a lot of hard work and effort's gone into putting this together with the team. Amazing, it's, uh, yeah, it's been a lot of work to get this thing uh, built, but it's, it's really good to kind of see the, that kind of pay off and we're yeah, finally getting some data, which is really good. So the new processes we've got in place is really setting us up to have 10 aircraft by the end of the year, allow us to have as many vehicles ready to race as possible. It's a version two of Mark III skins of really taking a lot of integration of the airframe and the systems into account and really how we can make it more easily assembled, um, easier to manufacture and just really streamline the entire process. We have a nose, a belly, we have a canopy yeah, and then the undershell is the final piece of the puzzle. Oh yeah, that looks awesome. If you look down the line, uh, everything is like all consistent black. It all looks wet, there's no white spider web look to it, which suggests that there's no air in it. Every pull that we get um, from our skins is getting better and better. So each part's getting more and more premium. Yeah, with the improved surface finish, we're looking at a much better sort of wrapping process of a vinyl wrapping, so a lot less imperfections on the, on the surface of the skin, which just allows us to get that, that clean surface finish that we're looking for. I really want to see a red. I'm, I'm excited to see a red. I know that we're going for black and silver, which is they're the staple colours and they're really nice, but I want, that, um, I want that Ferrari red for sure. Performance is so important, but um, for the premium race series that we're developing, aesthetics are just as important. Bonjour. Je m'appelle Félix, Félix Perron, et euh, je suis euh, le designer chez Airspeeder. We actually started working on the V1 of the cockpit, uh, even though it's a very basic version, it, it changes the whole thing because it's not a concept anymore, it's not abstract anymore, it's, it's, uh, it's real. Yeah, it's a mix of an F1 car, a fighter jet, and, uh, yeah, and a helicopter. My, my first goal was to make it look like a car, like a car uh, interior. It's also quite, uh, quite related to the F1 world, you know, because the pilot is going to be sitting in the cockpit. 
exactly like in a Formula One car, so very uh, laid back. So based on this position, then I had to, to figure out the best uh, position of uh, every important element of the cockpit. So the two main joysticks uh, and the most important features on the, on the central hub. So I see the world differently since I work at uh, Alauda and Airspeeder. If you maintain a good balance of creativity and uh, engineering logical thinking, you can actually improve your um, design process, you know. It unlocks some, some stuff in your brain, you know. Which materials to use for, for, for what component of the body, you know. Uh, what thickness, uh, what radius, at the end of the day, have an impact on the, on the overall look of, of your design. Especially nowadays when you spend so much time on the computers, the phones, the, the Zoom meetings and stuff like that, sometimes you want to you wanna get offline and just uh, you know, sketch in your garden. It's the best thing, it really is the best thing. It's pure freedom. I know it's a cliche to say that, but it's, it's, it's the case. You have a, a, a blank piece of paper in front of you and you're free.